So uh, here we have your pattern. Uh, we've laid down just a, a cardboard cutout that has some targets already on it just to save some time. So you can actually use cellophane sheets and just lay them on the perimeter of the, um, the 2D pattern. Um, or you can use a bit of cardboard like that or obviously place stickers on top of the, the 2D pattern. So once you've got your targets laid out, um, the next step is we just grab the scanner. So here's the ghost scan. Uh, this particular scanner can capture color as well as 3D geometry if you want. So we just go over to the software, click start. And once you're in the software, we can say if we want to uh, acquire texture or color, we can set the resolution or the size of the triangles. And then we can just basically hit scan. So it's a good idea to start in the middle of the, the 2D template. And then we can just work our way out to the edges. And it's kind of like a, a spider web approach. Um, and by doing this, what you're doing is actually reducing the volumetric um, deviation. So you're bringing that, that volumetric error stacking down, meaning that it's a lot more accurate. So I'm just basically like registering the targets. And in fact, you can actually scan the targets first before scanning the geometry. See, it's just like the spider web. So I go kind of like in and out and then back to the center each time. And you can pause it if you need to move your trolley around. and then resume at any time from where you left off. And you can see that the ghost scan spark is capturing the color as well. Okay, so now if I want to get more on the edge, or the side, I can just go down on a bit more of an angle and I can actually zoom in. So I can just make sure that as I'm scanning along, that I'm getting all that edge information. So if you had a flat table, this would be a little bit easier. You wouldn't have to bend down. Keep working around. And again, pause any time you like. So it's just great that it's got this real-time preview. Um, it also has like a distance meter. So if you're too close, it will go red. If you're too far away, it will go blue. So it really just gives you some really good visual feedback. Okay, so that's done. So once you press stop, um, you can have a, a look at what you've done. You can see it all there in crisp color. You can see any writing that you may have written. Then what I can do is I can create a plane and just basically cut away the concrete if I want to. So if I was to go add clipping plane, I could select three vertices and just pick the three points that I want to use. And then 
I can just keep moving up the plane until I eventually get rid of all the concrete and that will go red. So you can see there's a bit of a, um, a lift there. We possibly could have put something on there to weigh it down, but this will just give you a good idea of how the software works anyway. Okay, so then we can hit create. Okay, so that's done. So the next step is um, basically like we, we don't need all the internal part really. Um, so you could delete that and that would actually save you a bit of um, post processing. So I could just select around here. And I could take that away. So I guess this is just a, a demo. So just select that and go delete. Okay, so once that's done, we can now finally finalize and create our final model. The good thing about Creoform systems is that even if we scan at 0.8 millimeter triangles, we can change the resolution after scanning. So once you press stop, you could put in a lower value or a higher value. So higher values equal less resolution, lower values are, um, more resolution. Um, and yeah, get a, a different result. You don't necessarily have to rescan everything. So you can see here, we've got a pretty good amount of like wall detail, side detail on the, on the side of it. So we can create a nice outline. So once you've finished um, deleting any excess geometry that you may not need, um, we can now send the mesh to VX model. So you just click on this button here, send to VX model. And this opens up um, the VX model module and you'll get a lot more tools. So now what we could do is we could go to um, add a plane. And I can just go to uh, the triangle selection menu, hold control and click on the plane. And it just finds um, the surface that's a plane. And basically just keeps adding and adding selection to it. So the interesting thing is, as you're doing this, it's giving you um, basically like a deviation of how um, accurately it's fitted the plane. So since we never weighed it down, um, you're looking at about three millimeters in height difference. Um, but this is okay. We'll just use this um, as a reference. So we'll go create. And it just fits a best fit plane over top of it. Now what I can do is go to the align to origin tool. Um, now I can select plane one as my X and Y axis. And I'll just turn the visibility of the scan off. So we're just seeing just the mesh now. So now when we look up at it from above, you can see that we have, um, you know, aligned it to a flat plane. If we want to take it further, we can actually create more planes as well. So I might just close that and go back to the scan. And maybe this edge here, we could create another plane. Um, so I could say, uh, add a plane, triangle selection. And I can just add some surface selections along it. And just a few spot points just to create a plane along this edge. Create. And then vice as well, I could do it on this end as well if I wanted to. Okay. And then create. 
So then I've got more entities to use for my alignment. So I click on align, go to plane one, X and Y. Then I could use plane two as Y and Z. And then I could use plane three as X and Z. So you can see now when I'm looking at it from above, it's aligned to X and Y. Um, and you can flip the planes as well if you need to or want to. Um, so that you just orientate it a different way. Okay, so once that's done, we can turn off the entities. Um, we can now click on Create Silhouette. And the silhouette's interesting because it just basically takes an outline of the outermost points of the pattern. So I can choose my plane and it will just create the silhouette from the scan data. So once the silhouette's done, you can click on create and close. And then under the entities now, you'll see that you'll have um, a 2D outline for the silhouette. So that literally just like follows the outline um, quite well. It's good, especially for patterns that aren't um, completely flat. Um, we could have tried the cross section tool, but since one edge was kind of like poking up quite high in the air, um, the silhouette option was probably the best bet. So once you've got that there, you can just right click and go export entities and choose to export as a DXF. Okay, so you can export to DXF. If you, for example, have SolidWorks, you can right click and transfer directly to SolidWorks. So once you've hit Live Transfer to SolidWorks, it would automatically open up the, um, the 2D template. But I'll just show you how to manually import a DXF file um, for your interest sake. So we'll just go File, New, and create a new part. You can then go to File, Open. So just pop it where it is. Okay, so here's the... Um, 2D template. So then it's best if you import um, to a new part as a 2D sketch and import it as a reference. It would just be, it'd be a little bit nicer um, to work with. And then we can also just set the scale or the, the units. So you want to make sure you're using that in millimeters. And then select finish. So like I said, if you were live transferring, it would just come in already basically looking like this. So then the next step is we need to create a sketch. Uh, we then create the plane that we will tell SOLIDWORKS the plane we want to draw on. And then we can get the, the line tool and just start to draw over it. So you can oh, just zoom in the wrong way. Okay, so you can just click on that line now and you can see it will snap to it. And then I can click down the other end. Okay, and then just press escape. Um, then I can get the line tool again and just repeat the process. And I'll just zoom in a little bit closer just for your sake. Line tool. few more lines to go. And this is exactly tracing over top of it. Uh, these these lines aren't necessarily like vertical or horizontal. Um, so if you want to take control over that 
and you want to make them actually like vertical lines and horizontal lines, you can do that as well in SolidWorks. Um, but we're assuming that we're just trying to fit this profile as tightly as we can. So next we can go to Trim Entities and you can choose Corner Trim and then you can just simply select each of the entities and trim those to give them a sharp, sharp edge. And then once it's completed, you should see a face appear. So if we zoom in now, you can see how well it's fitted over top of it. So you've just gone ahead and sketched over. So that's the easy part, really, just sketching over the top of the cross section once you have it, or the silhouette. So once you're finished with that, um, you can then just go and exit the sketch. You can then go File, Save As, again choose DXF, and I'm just going to save it as an edited version, or overwrite it, and you just choose which front or face you want to view, sorry, export as, and then hit go OK. And it'll give you a preview of how that looks. Um, and then you can save it. So at this point here, I could also just turn off the visibility of the, um, the reference and actually just save that again so that it doesn't include the reference. And just go back into here and choose DXF again. Overwrite the edited version. Make sure you choose the front view. And it should be just purely, um, yeah, the outline that you want to save. Okay, so that's done. Now we can test this out in another system. Um, so I'll open up, for example, SketchUp. So here we have SketchUp. It's just a, a simple tool that we can use to, to test the import. So we can go File Import, we can select the edited version and import that. And you can see it's now come in as actual edges. So I'm going to send you um, this file and you can test importing it into your own CAD CAM system so that you can you know, cut this out. Thanks for your time.